and that's not <laughs> ready at the beginning of these videos. I apologize for that. Um, welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. I'm Andrew Broussard. Today I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua in front of me, my typical paper that I utilize. I use it because it's 100% cotton. The price point's pretty good, and um, utilizing quality paper really um, really goes a long way with watercolor. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. It's just where I've landed um, paper-wise what works for me. Uh, okay, so I pre-wet it in this fashion before I turn the video on. That was to just minimize um, the, the length of time of these videos. I just did a second coat of water just to kind of get everything out nice and neat. What that does is it, the paper absorbs the water, it stretches, and then I use the binder clips to help it sit flat. In front of me, I have a, they call it a butcher pan palette. I have what's called the Ron Ranson palette on it. I have lemon yellow, um, light red oxide, alizarin crimson. I skip over this guy for this one. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna. My old position for lemon yellow. I feel like I'm going to use lemon yellow a lot and it gets tainted very easily, so I moved it here. Uh, ultramarine blue and Payne's gray. If I wind up using anything else, I'll let you know. I have a quick pic picture off of pexels.com. This is a uh, royalty free um, photo site and it's just of a barn. We're going to use it loosely as a reference. We're not going to paint it um, directly from it. So with this, this is going to be more of a beginner tutorial. If there's anything that I don't address, if there's any questions that you have, please ask it down below. Uh, I film this in real time on Twitch, and then I upload it to YouTube. So um, you can ask me live whenever I do the live paintings. Or like I said, on YouTube, you can comment down below, and I try to respond in a timely fashion. Now, for this, I paint in a fast and loose style, mostly, and this is for beginners. So there's a few different things you can do to um, block out the shape of that barn. You can use masking fluid. Uh, there's people that use wax, but wax is kind of a complicated um, uh, process. You apply the wax. Later on, I think you have to put wax paper on top or some type of absorbent paper. Apply heat to pull the wax out. Uh, you can put masking tape to block it off. But what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this raw sienna and I'm going to put it in the sky the way I would usually put a sky in and I am going to put it in this fashion so raw sienna sky and I'm going to loosely trace the outline of this barn now compositionally I didn't do much experimentation with this this is just for us to um, kind of get like a technique down that might work for y'all. If you guys don't like this technique, of course there's other ones. If you want me to experiment with different ones, let me know. But I find that this falls the easiest into uh, the whole fast and loose technique. So here's the side of the barn. Here's the, the bottom front of the barn. Here's the other side of the barn. Here's that slanted roof, slanted, slanted, slanted. So you kind of get the idea. You could play around with the size of it, um, adjust it. This one we're looking straight on so we don't need to worry too much about perspective. These lines don't have to be perfect. Okay. So last night I did something like this. Uh, from the same photo inspired by it and what I did was I did it as what's called a vignette vignette pronunciation of those terms unfortunately isn't my forte um, and that's where the whole paper isn't covered completely there's usually a bit of white of paper left in some corners so it's just a kind of stylistic approach 
This is mixing in ultramarine, just to go in the sky some. I'll just put it up in this corner. You could play around with cerulean blues. Um, you can play around with Prussian blue, other things in the sky. I'm just putting a little bit in. Um, you could put in Payne's Gray for clouds, etc. Now, next, I'm going to look at this line. There's two things I can do. I can continue in this fashion, and then when I finally go in to paint the barn, I'd pretty much cover up over any extra edges. Or, I could take a paper towel, hold it flat, and since it's wet right here, Can give myself crisp edges. Now this could potentially affect um, the wet and wet on the inside when we get to that part. It's affecting a little bit of my angle so I'm just going to play it around the way I want. Compositionally it's kind of right in the middle but that stuff we'll worry about for another day in another video. And I could just lift and clean up in this fashion. Just watch out if you have um, paint that you put down that is uh, more of a staining paint. That's another day as well. So now I'm going to put the trees in around it. Yesterday I used ultramarine blue and lemon yellow. You get a green. The Ron Rants and Palette Greens, the mixture of those two, you can get it from Payne's Gray and Lemon Yellow, or you can get it from Ultramarine and Lemon Yellow, and you can get a variety of it. The green is a little, is it showing up on the camera? Let me check. Yes, it is. The green is a little weird for me. You can use a sap green. Uh, you can also change the green by adding a little bit of a red to it, by toning it down. So this is a little bit of burnt, or more than a little bit of burnt sienna. And we can get a different green from that. So I'm putting a tree in, in this position. And this is to help our barn sit in place. Okay. Now, in the photo reference, it does come down alongside. We do see this tree there. Now, what's important is this. In order to help a barn sit in place, here, let's say this is the bottom of my barn, you're going to see a little bit of land alongside it. If I look at the photo reference, front of the barn, a little bit of land alongside it, a little bit of land alongside it. That helps it sit in place. So I could crop this off as the background and I could come in later on with a different color for the lawn. And I could help it sit in place on this side too. And put a little bit of that foliage action back here. You don't have to go overboard with it, experiment with it. Um, have some break up the symmetry. I don't want the exact same shape on either side. Leave some openings for the barn to touch the sky. You could even come up and not even have them connect completely. And just play around with it and have fun. I'm going to just put this in just to kind of show that front a little bit, just to help you guys see the shape of the barn taking place. I am going to grab some other colors and put it in. This is actually fun. Well, the whole thing's fun, but if you've been following my painting process or if you look at my other videos, you'll often see that I paint pretty dark. Um, this is to show you that those techniques that are used in all those videos 
you could just switch your palette up and use different colors and you could get something bright and cheery or you could get something dark and moody using the same techniques. This is alizarin crimson. I put it fresh on the palette so that I can get nice concentrations of it. And I could feed some in the sky. This is more um, into this cloud uh, tree. I don't know why I'm getting my masses wrong. I'm trying to film it fast so that, like I said, it's not too long of a video, but I feel like my the speed that I'm going at is having me stumble. So I apologize. If you ever need to re-wet an area, spray bottle. Put a little bit in here. I think I didn't follow the painting, the um, picture exactly. This is just to give the idea of like posies or um, or the flowers that are blooming right now. I can't think of it. It gives us the effect of wildflowers, flowers in a field. So we can continue playing around in this area. Everything's still wet and wet, so we're gonna get interesting effects. You can take blue, ultramarine. Maybe we just green it a little bit. We can feed that in. And down the line, you're going to start looking for darks and lights within it and playing in that fashion. But this is, like I said, more of a beginner tutorial. This is more for um, y'all having fun and building a foundation on how we could get the barn in shape in place using elements around it, how we could stay in the wet and wet phase, etc. Now let me put in my yard that I was talking about. So this is picking up a little bit of um, raw sienna. Don't worry if your colors aren't the exact same as mine. This is the grass leading back to that tree line. I cut it in front a little bit. Grass leading back to that tree line, like I said, helping it sit in place. We start to get that, it's sitting there. Along this edge, we could take a dark, maybe mix a darker green. Here's lemon yellow with some Payne's gray. I'll show you the different greens. Bring it alongside as if we have a shadow being cast. We're not really focused too much on the direction of light with this one. It's more um, creating this image. But shadows will help it to start sitting in place. This is the most I've cleaned my brush within a painting. We could just grab some lemon yellow and just swipe in a little bit of texture. And not to go too much, but here's a rigger. This is a number four rigger. I've been using it um, just because it's been holding a lot more than my number one rigger, but it does sometimes I don't get my nice sharp calligraphy strokes. So this is um, burnt umber mixed with ultramarine just to get a little dark, just to draw in a few trunks and keep the branches in. But we'll stop playing around with this background in a moment. This is just to give you guys ideas and to build a foundation. Now, let's look at the barn itself. I had lifted some of these areas in order to um, kind of get that crisp edge. Um, not 
really necessary, but it was there to show you all that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Ross, uh, Bird Sienna and Ultramarine. So this is a classic combination for a gray. We do have Payne's Gray on the palette, but mixing these two allows us to go back and forth um, and change it between warm and cool. If I need to re-wet any of these areas, I can spread a little bit of water in there. If I catch the edge, I'll get a back run like that, so I just want to be a little bit careful. I could also just take this rigger, which was not clean, and I could pass a little bit of water along there. Reason being is we're using the hake and we're going to try to get a variety of effects from it. So the hake by its nature has tons of um, I think it's a I think it's goat hair. So it's tons of goat hair um, in this case, they're all over the place. And it'll allow me to get these brush strokes. And these brush strokes, I'm gonna use as an illusion for the idea of the boards of wood. So with the fast and loose, and for this beginner approach, we're not going to um, try to draw every single board of wood. If you don't have a hake, you can try it with a flat brush. I'm not sure how much you'll get with the flat brush, if you'll get that a kind of lined texture with it. You could also take the rigger, draw in a few lines, and then spritz it with water, or spritz the air with water and then draw in a few lines, and that dispersion will give that illusion there. So I'm just cleaning up this edge. Okay, so this was, once again, our burnt sienna and ultramarine. Now there's areas of the barn that are gonna be darker. So I could try to mix a stronger concentration pigment-wise to get that dark. I personally have trouble with the mixture of these two to get that, and I'm not quite sure why that happens for me. But I can darken this mixture with um, the burnt umber if need be. I could also darken it with um, Payne's Gray, but right now I'm just going to try to stay with those two colors. So we have this dark area where you'd probably pull in the tractor. You can see I'm not perfectly mixed on my um, hake, but that does add an interesting effect to it. With the fast and loose and painting in this style, in order to, um, I don't want to use any words that might be derogatory towards artists, but in order to prevent you from being too, um, I don't know if we would say cartoonish, we want to um, have a variety of tones in there. Okay, that's that over underhang part right there. Dark along this side as well. And just putting in the darks, blocking it in, letting it have that texture. I could selectively choose some areas. If um, we do have the light coming from this direction, if that's where we chose, or if we're looking for something that has that, we can put that shadow from that um, 
ledge, that little gutter that comes over. So play around with the hake, see what textures you can get. Play along down here. Okay, let me put the hake on the side for right now. Let me grab the number four rigger. I'm gonna try not to uh, switch over to any other types of riggers for this one, just so we can maintain simplicity. This is ultramarine and burnt see, uh, burnt umber. I'll feed in a few darks. Get some variety in here. I'm going to try not to do any straight lines, just gestural marks. Oh, as always, feel free to paint along. Um, I'd love to see your results. I have a different social media linked down below for you all to check out. Let's put in that barn door. It's a little off center. Barn doors are another area that if we were focusing on direction of light, we could play around with the corner that would block most light. You could also think of how barn doors have a lot of crisscross going on. And you can put those concepts in. And we have it wet and wet, so it's going to diffuse nicely for us. If the barn was sitting on an angle, if it was receding in at one point or the other, we would then um, focus on perspective and the lines, the horizontal lines. They would help us see it recede into the picture or come out of the picture. However, we're just doing a simple um, looking straight on at a barn. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to put a little bit of shadow here. Shadows kind of catch across the front. Now just remember we haven't done any dry off whatsoever. So if there's ever a point where you feel like you're just getting a little bogged down, you can do a dry off. Or you could you could literally just walk away from it. Um, if there's ever any in air, any time you're getting frustrated, just um, just walk away and then come back later on. You can also um, just move to a different area. For instance, if I'm having trouble right here, I can just move back over here. This is to show you how you can use a rigger to put those lines in, and since it's wet and wet. It's just going to diffuse it and give the illusion of a barn. Those planks of wood. Now that raw sienna glow, or the white glow that is also taking place, I think that'd be interesting if you were to do a church painting. It would give you um, that effect. You could take the side of the rigger. For dry brushing into this. It's still wet and wet, but you can get some texture. I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray, just to put a few darks in. Okay, let's see. We're still relatively wet in some spots. My paper has been drying a little differently lately. I think it has to do with the temperature in the house or maybe potentially dryness in the house. 
We did get some back runs because we had went some water and that wet and wet. So we're just gonna put a little bit extra stuff in this foreground. We'll do a dry off, see if there's anything we need to address. You can see how this area was still wet while this area was, wasn't. So we get an effect right there, which is um, something we usually try to avoid having happen. Now with the barn, you can put in the different elements around it. You can put uh, fences in, you can put um, people walking up to it, going to and from it. Um, there's a lot of different things you can kind of add to it to make it your own. I think yesterday when I filmed this type of scene the first time, I had talked about how, this is just ultramarine, I had talked about how you can you put a sign up front, you could hang up a little sign right here and put the name of the location. So if you're painting this for a friend or a family member or something like that, you can do that. I am going to get more green. This is the lemon yellow and the Payne's gray green. And I'm going to help it sit in place by having a little bit of overgrowth in front. You don't have to go overboard with it. You don't have to trace the whole bottom of it, but it just helps give the illusion to it being pushed back and sitting in place. Same thing with bushes along the side. And I could take that and try to clean up that edge. But you could really have fun with the colors. said color is more um, more of what you make it you can use the same approach using the tonalist palette that I talk about and make everything dark and moody you can um, probably even get it more bright and cheerful if you use things like quinacridone um, rose or quinacridone gold phthalo green things like that Though the quince, green and the um, rose, if you mix those together, you do get a really nice neutral. And I use that for one of my moody um, paintings. Okay, let's do a dry off. So at this point, you can go back in and play with the textures in the trees. You can crisp things up. You could highlight, darken, um, add in other elements, uh, and just have fun with it. But what I'm going to do, I talked about it on yesterday's one, and I mentioned it on this. We could put different post fences in. So I have the number four. I'm just mixing it dark with the ultramarine and the... Uh, burnt sienna and this is a good place to play around with composition directional guys um, to change you know where the eyes looking and how it's moving around and all I'm doing is just drawing it in these guys also help with shadows direction of the sun. If you want to do things like that, they would cast their shadow in this direction. We could also put some fences up closer.
having it come towards us right there. You can do gates. Put little dots on it if you want it to be a barbed wire fence. Make the lines thicker if you want it to be bo um, boards. Just, you know, play around, experiment. If you wanted to kind of tickle it more and put some more ideas in, you could put in the growth of grass that usually takes a place if somebody's not weed whacking in that area. Um, we could put a gate here, we could close things off. It's limitless possibilities. And like I said, if you wanted to take darks, you start picking, I can take that dark, just add a few little accent marks. Just in those kind of corners that would catch the least a bit of light. And on that note, we'll um, call this painting finished. I hope you enjoyed. Um, down below I have a link for Patreon. I'd love for you to consider uh, supporting me. There's two simple tiers, like a $2 and a $5, and I do have some exclusive content for uh, Patreons, uh, patrons. Um, and if, if not, if you don't want to do that or are, are unable to, I completely understand. Um, just, you know, like, subscribe, comment. So let me dry this off. I'll sign it. We'll call it done. talk to you all soon. Have a great day.